Welcome back to the channel. This video is on geology and sedimentary rocks and in particular we're looking at sedimentary facies and what these are and why they are very important to understand when trying to reconstruct paleo environments or depositional environments that have created the sedimentary rock. This is the Earth Science Classroom. With any rock or rock type, you're going to have certain distinctive and consistent characteristics with that rock that creates or forms that rock. For example, igneous rock with the mineral composition or the size of the crystals or the intrusive, extrusive characteristics or metamorphic rock with the foliation or non-foliation and the grade of metamorphism and the diagenesis that goes into forming that metamorphic rock and the heat and pressure and the time underground and what happens to it. The same thing applies to sedimentary rocks. And when you have a bunch of sedimentary rocks with the same consistent and distinctive rock characteristics in a large volume, we call this a facies, which is Latin for appearance. So basically the rocks with the same appearance and they can include the physical, chemical and biological. And we know that a sedimentary rock is formed from the accumulation of sediments or class, be it clastic, be it chemical or biochemical, and these accumulate in various depositional environments from wind, mass movement, and most likely water, rivers, deltas, streams, floodplains, mud flaps, tidal flaps, shallow marine environments, and deeper marine environments. So these facies are characteristics that a scientist can look at and pick out what has happened to that rock or how it's formed and what's happened to it once it's formed over time and the, the three characteristics or the three divisions of faeces if it's chemical and physical it's called litho faeces litho mean rock organic remains flora and fauna and obviously fossils which is a big one is biofaces and if there is rare trace fossils in that rock it's ichnofaces. So a facies is that general consistent characteristic which is larger than a sweet and a sweet is larger than a bed and that's larger than a strata. So we're getting into the larger accumulation of multiple sedimentary bedding or sedimentary sweets that combine to form a sedimentary facies. One method which is common to distinguish between the characteristics for sedimentary facies is the CTSFAF acronym. And the C is the color of that sedimentary rock and the composition, which would then account for the color based on the minerals and elements and the class or sediments that form that rock in the first place. The texture, the texture would be the grain size, the shape, the sorting, is it angular, is it rounded, is it well sorted or evenly sorted or poorly sorted. Then you have the sedimentary structures, that would be the structures that formed from the depositional environment with water for example, it will be a, the flow of water and the ripples in the rock which showed the ripples were present at the time of deposition. Then you have the fossils, which is key in terms of index fossils, in terms of absolute or relative age of fossils, and also the diversity and the abundance to have an idea of what kind of animals and ecosystems, food webs, and diversity or diversity there was in that environment in the past. Then we have the association. That's the contact with other beds around it. Is there going to be some unconformities or faults or some sort of changes to the environment which would overlap and mix the corresponding beds and adjust the characteristics accordingly? Then we have F, which is form. So again, this is close to the structure, but this is the patterns, whether it's continuous or discontinuous across the sedimentary rock. And then once you have these characteristics through this method, we can then analyze the facies to get a more general and more complete analysis, complete understanding of this particular rock based on certain principles like uniformitarianism and lateral continuity, horizontality, and any 
changes to the area tectonically with sea level rise or fall that could have occurred to change the characteristics. And then we're going to have a comparison. You have idolized facies, which is the generic, what you expect from all the data combined, like a weather model where it's, it's going to predict based on previous events what happened. And then you have the observed sedimentary facies, the actual data you get from that rock. And you can compare the observed in re real time versus the idealized model, so to speak, sedimentary facies. A sedimentary rock can act as an open book to the history or the geologic history of a certain area over the course of millions or hundreds of millions or even billions of years, depending on how many sedimentary rock layers and facies you have in that particular location. For example, the Grand Canyon in Arizona, the National Park, has about one billion years of sedimentary strata and facies between the Grand Canyon supergroup at the bottom and the Paleozoic rock layers on the canyon wall up to the plateau surface which is the kebab formation you've got a billion years of strata there and cemetery facies that can tell you of what happened to that part of arizona and the colorado plateau and even the north american continent over the course of a billion years way before any humans ever stepped foot on the north american continent so we can kind of re-establish reconstruct scientifically with great detail using these very accurate sedimentary facies and the analysis of these facies to properly establish the correct paleo environment. This way we can work backwards and have this ongoing transformation of how the Earth's surface was altered throughout geologic history. Quite fascinating, quite awesome and great to understand why we do this in such great detail. This is the Earth Science Classroom. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, please subscribe, like, and share. And if you want more content and videos on Earth Science, please check out my channel.